What's good, y'all? This is your boy Black G92. Now for tonight, I'm going. I'm going ahead and do a reaction to Watch Mojo's recent countdown video titled "Top 20 Real Life Man Eaters," which was posted this past September on the 13th of that month. And of course, going off by the title, basically about like animals that have, like partook in the consumption of human flesh due to a host of different factors and so i expect to see some famous cases on here some that might might be familiar with and those that i may not be aware of so let's see what this countdown is looking like in about three two one and by the way blind reaction welcome to watch mojo and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 deadliest man eaters in history mm. For this list, we're looking at individual animals, as well as specific pairs, prides, or packs with the highest human kill counts. What would you do if cornered by one of these animals? Tell us your survival plan in the comments. Man. Number 20, New Jersey Hold Shark. Up. Before they say anything about this one, because I think I know which one, what case they're talking about right here, like the New Jersey Shark title, and of course, number 20. Like I've recently seen a video of a saltwater crocodile hopping into a boat and of course the person holding the phone cut the cut the footage off like halfway once it hopped into the boat like it was a very recent video and my i, I shared it on my instagram story and i was like if, if that shit would happen to me in real life i would just shit myself like for real if a crocodile did that in my in my presence like for real this decides this goes in go into the boat hop into the boat like for real because them things like if they bite onto you and just I don't see you. It's over. It's over. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what Nick gonna talk about. Which I already, I kind of have an idea what it might say about this one. Because matter of fact, I'm gonna let her explain. It. Shark attacks are rare and fatal yeah. attacks even more so. Yet sharks have an unfair reputation as voracious man eaters. The summer of 1916 was this uh, beautiful, innocent age, and the Jersey Shore was the place to be at that time. The bad rap is partly thanks to the Jersey Shore shark attacks of 1916. Yeah. That summer, a heat wave drove unprecedented crowds to the beaches. During the first two weeks of July, there were five attacks along the New Jersey coast, four of them fatal. All of a sudden, it starts screaming. This blood-curdling scream rips along the shore. In the panic that ensued, hundreds of sharks were hunted down. Researchers still aren't sure whether the culprit was a great white, a bull shark, or more than one animal. Yeah, now I've, I've read somewhere, on, I think it's on Wikipedia somewhere, where they mentioned this, like how they still don't know, not, they're still not 100% sure of like what species of shark attacked those people. Like there's some re there's some that came out like it may have been decades ago that may have been a bull shark because for years people thought it was a may have been a great white but people have said bull shark but people still don't but like like she mentioned in the video people still don't know and I, like I, said, I may have seen clips of that documentary or I may or have seen some that's similar to this like discussing the whole twelve days of terror which is tight which is a title of a film of course based around this event. It was a very, a very interesting like case of, of shark attack. Like, of a case of interesting like shark attack case because like a couple of those attacks happened in fresh water, which I'm sure she's gonna bring up in the video. But the incidents changed how people saw sharks, even yeah. inspiring Peter Benchley's novel Jaws and Steven Spielberg's adaptation. <laughs> Number nineteen, the Tiger of Segur. The animals on this list don't usually prey on humans. Often, disabilities drive them to their new diet, with humans making for easier prey. Such was the case with the Tiger of Segur, a young male Bengal tiger who, according to Indian-born British hunter and writer Kenneth Anderson, killed at least five victims in the Nilgiri Hills in South India. It ate three of them, with humans making for easier prey. Such was the case with the Tiger of Segur, a young male Bengal tiger who, according to Indian-born British hunter and writer Kenneth Anderson, killed at least five victims in the Nilgiri Hills in South India. It ate three of them, while the mangled bodies of the others were retrieved. Anderson hunted the tiger over the course of weeks, following tracks and blood trails, and spending long nights lying in wait. When he finally shot the tiger, he found that it only had one eye. There was an old gunshot slug in the other, explaining its decision to chase easier meals. Number 18, yeah, the Mfue man-eating lion. 
Man-eaters aren't just terrors of the distant past. In 1991, one mm. particular maneless lion claimed six lives in and around the Mfue in the Luangwe Valley of eastern Zambia. Its victims ranged from boys out walking at night to women dragged from their own huts. The lion was distinguished by its massive size, measuring 10 feet long and weighing 500 pounds, and its absolute fearlessness. Sound like a big boy it once right returned there. to a victim. Sound like this, sound like this lion was a big boy. Just imagine something like that dragging you from like where you sleep at in a place where you should feel safe and where you're supposed to feel safe and relaxed. Like that would be the most terrifying thing like one could experience. I certainly wouldn't wish out on nobody for real. House to steal a bag of her laundry, roaring over it in the center of the village. This odd behavior led to rumors that it was really an evil spirit or sorcerer. It was finally killed by California hunter Wayne Hosek after a three-week wait in a hunting hide. Number 17, Ke Sagake, the son- I just read, I just re recently, like, looked up this case recently. It was like, yes, yes, it was last night I looked this, I just looked this up. I wonder what, what any info she's going to say about that, but, like, and what, but back on the re previous, like, we Bay, my we we move a uh, lanny lion. Like I wouldn't be surprised if it, some people would thought it was like evil spirit because the way that the way it was described this behavior, yeah, sound like it's something out of super based on supernatural abilities of some, of some type of shit. Because lions don't normally like go in the village to less, of course, lack of well, not lack, but more so in, injury or something. I didn't hear mentioned of like. Of that lion being suffering from injury as a driving factor into hunting and eating people in that village. I might have to look it up sometime. I I'm down with this reaction. If it's you, brown bear. This story seems too horrific to be true. In November 1915, a Nusuri brown bear, also known as a black grizzly, stole food from a farm in northwestern Hokkaido, Japan. It was shot and wounded, but on December 9th broke into another home, killing a child and dragging a woman into the forest. The next night, while the men searched for it, women and children took refuge in a nearby homestead, until the bear burst through a window and bit and clawed through the panicked residents. <laughs> The attacks left six people dead, with another dying later from injuries. Initially, bear hunter Yamamoto Heikichi, who recognized the bear as the dreaded man-eater Keisagake, refused to help. But after this last attack, he joined the hunters and brought the bear down. Uh, I hate these commercials. What would you do if you went down out here? You wouldn't want to go down out there. Number 16, the Wolf of Jusinge. In the early 1820s, a lone wolf prowled the outskirts of Jusinge in central Sweden. Unlike most wolves, however, it wasn't hunting hares or deer. A few years earlier, it had been captured as a pup and kept in captivity, which may explain how it lost its natural wariness of humans. Yeah. Within the span of just three months, Recipe it attacked 31 people, killing and partially consuming 12. Mm. With a few exceptions, its victims were aged between 3 and a half and 15. It was hunted down and killed on March 27, 1821. Number 15, the sloth bear of Mysuru. Right about this one too. Don't let the name fool you. Sloth bears walk in a slow, awkward shamble, but they can easily outrun a human. In 1957, an Indian sloth bear in the southern state of Mysuru went on a killing spree that saw dozens mauled and 12 killed. It would attack its victims' faces, clawing and biting them to shreds. Enter hunter and writer Kenneth Anderson again, whose mm. friend begged him for help after his son was fatally attacked. It took Anderson several attempts. On one occasion, he came across a mutilated victim barely alive and attempted to carry him away, but sprained his ankle and had to be rescued himself. However, after lying in wait one night, he eventually succeeded in catching the bear by surprise. Number 14, the Tigress of Javalagiri. We're not done with Anderson yet, far from it. Other infamous man-eaters he hunted included the tiger of Munda Chipalum, which he shot while eating its seventh victim, and the Tigress of Javalagiri, which makes for a much sadder story. 
After poachers killed a tiger in southern India's Javadagiri forest. Now, before we say anything else, this Kenneth Anderson dude just stated, must have had a, like a life on contract over in India or some shit to keep him over there hunting down these man eaters. Like, that's crazy. Like, I'm about to look up, I'm about to look up this Kenneth Anderson dude. If you know anything, any info about, about this guy, be, be sure to post it in the description, description box so I can look it up. Its bereaved mate began calling outside the village. A young hunter shot the tigress, wounding it, and soon after it took its first victims, eventually killing 15. Kenneth Anderson was called in, but was outwitted while lying in wait when the tigress suddenly appeared behind him. He shot its ear off, but it escaped. He was later able to get a clearer shot by imitating a tiger call, a ruse that left him feeling troubled and sorry for the tigress. Number 13, the Wolves of Turku. This trio of wolves in southwest Finland terrorized the town of Turku in the early 1880s. In fact, their predations were so relentless, the national government got involved, organizing several hunts. The pack preyed on children, and some fearful souls whispered that the Antichrist had come, believing the animals' appetites to be unnatural. Before they were hunted down, the wolves took 22 lives in all. They are far from the only wolf pack to have hunted children. In 1981, the wolves of Hazaribag in eastern India killed 13. And a few years later in 1985, the wolves of Asht in central India killed 17. Damn. Number 12, the wolves of Paris. Man, those wolves had quite the appetite. For real. <laughs> and like the fir number 13, the early... The, when they mentioned the ones in Turku, like the, the fact they're taxed through the attention of the government, that's when we know it's an issue when the government gets involved in animal attacks. Like, if it, that's when we know it's bad. But. When you think of Paris, wolves probably aren't close associations, but the city has had several infamous incidents. In 1765, the wolf of Soissons attacked 18 people in northeast Paris, killing mm. four. However, the most notorious attacks occurred in the winter of 1450, when a starving pack snuck through holes in the city walls, creating panic throughout Paris. The leader was a reddish wolf nicknamed Courteau, meaning bobtail, a feature that's led to speculation he was a wolf hybrid or Iberian wolf. The pack killed 40 thing. people before a band of brave residents flushed them out and into the square in front of Notre Dame, where they were stoned and speared to death. Damn. Number 11, the leopard of Gumalpur. Also known as the spotted devil of Gumalpur, this leopard claimed 42 victims in God southwestern damn. India in the mid 20th century. The animal terrorized the villages of Gumalpur and Devrabeta to the point where people were afraid to leave their houses. But staying indoors didn't save them either. When residents took to barricading their doors at night, it forced its way in through thatch walls. Eventually, hunter Kenneth Anderson managed to hunt it down and discovered porcupine quills in its right forefoot, preventing it from pursuing faster prey. Number 10, the Tigers of Chogart. Man-eaters don't always hunt alone. Known yeah, as the Tigers of Chogart, does. this Bengal tigress and her sub-adult cub reportedly killed 64 people in the Kumaon region of Four. Uttarakhand in northern uh, India. Dang. The true number of victims may be higher. Yeah. It excludes victims who were mauled and died afterwards. In 1929, famed British hunter and naturalist Jim Corbett was asked to hunt the man-eaters down. He witnessed the tiger's carnage firsthand, tending to the wounds of a girl who'd survived an attack, but whose scalp was left, quote, hanging in two halves. Ugh. It took him several Ugh. attempts, but Corbett Sounds eventually painful. shot and killed both tigers. He discovered that the tigress had a broken canine, worn down Ugh. teeth, and broken claws, explaining her unusual change in diet. Ugh. Number 9, Chengi Chali. This pale lion hunted the British outpost Chengi in 1909 in what is now northern Zambia. With light-colored fur and only half a tail, Chali, also known as Charlie and the White Lion, was easily recognizable. The man-eater would force its way through doorways and thatched rooftops. One woman woke to find Chali tearing through the wall of her hut, but survived after thrusting a firebrand in the lion's face. For hunters, Chali proved an elusive catch, stealing the bait right out of traps. Eventually, teaming up with two other lions, Chali was blamed for 90 deaths before a gun trap got the better of him. 
Number eight, the Leopard of the Golis Range. Little is known about this man-eater, who roamed the Golis Mountains in northwestern Somalia in the late 1800s. British big game hunter H.G.C. Swain wrote that according to locals, it claimed more than 100 victims. A panther with dark fur that blended into the shadows, it would lie in wait on rocks that overlooked a turn in the path, ambushing its prey from above. The region's rough terrain made leopards difficult to track, and this man-eater's final fate is unknown. According to English traveler James Forsyth, a panther in the Sony district of central India came close to the same victim count. The Sony panther was said to drink its victim's blood and leave the bodies. Whoa. Number seven, the beast Talk of- about nightmare fuel. <laughs> a leopard that drinks the blood of his victims. Sounds something that could make for a great horror movie adaptation based on that event. Like, if Hollywood wants to, you know, do, do a film adaptation of that case, those, of those attacks, per se, so, hey. That's one that's so, that's what thing's so scary about these animal attacks sometimes, because when it takes place in those er those type of, in those areas, like it's, you never know how, how many victims they may have claimed, because some of those, like, numbers don't get reported. Bivodon. A long, tufted tail, russet fur, and a huge head full of teeth. What was the beast of Gévaudan? This man-eater stalked the former French province of Gévaudan in the 1760s, killing an estimated 113 people. Yep, Based on descriptions, it's believed to have been a large wolf or wolf dog, yep. but at the time, there were also fears that it was a witch or werewolf. Other theories claim it was a hyena, lion, or even a mastiff armored in boar hide. King Louis XV sent in soldiers and hunters, but the deaths only stopped after farmer Jean Chastel shot a wolf-like creature with a silver bullet in 1767. Mm. Number six, the leopard of Rudra Prayang. For eight years, the people of Gadval in northern India lived in terror of the dark thanks to this relentless man-eater. The leopard of Rudra Prayang would catch some victims outdoors at night, but that didn't mean locals were safe at home. The leopard would break down doors, enter through windows, and even dig through mud walls, dragging people away into the dark. Official records put fatal attacks at 125. When soldiers failed to catch the leopard, Jim Corbett, the same hunter who later killed the Tigers of Chogat, embarked on a 10-week hunt in 1926 that brought the leopard's reign to an end. Corbett suspected that the leopard had gotten a taste for humans from scavenging on unburied body. Yeah. Unintentional. Bodies yes. after an epidemic. Number five, the Savo oh, Man. These are very famous. This notorious pair of maneless lions has become legendary. Yep. In 1898, the duo terrorized workers building a railway bridge over Kenya's Savo River. They dragged victims right out from their tents, and for yep. the better part of a year, defied all attempts to stop them, evading hunters and jumping over thorn fences placed around the campsite. Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson, who oversaw construction, blamed them for 135 deaths, although subsequent studies have suggested he may have exaggerated. Yeah. After months of attacks, Patterson himself was able to shoot and kill them. They may have turned to hunting humans after an outbreak of the virus Rinderpest decimated their natural prey. Mm. Number four, Gustave. Gustave. A scarred <laughs> living legend. Gustave Heard haunts the Rusizi River and Lake Tanganyika in Burundi. He named the creature Gustave. It is a name which now strikes fear in the hearts of people across Burundi. Estimated to be over 60 years old, the grizzled croc is thought to weigh a colossal 2,000 pounds. Yeah, the exact heavy. number of his victims is unknown, but rumors claim... Yeah, Gustav was a big boy, for real, like 2,000 pounds, like, yeah, he, not to me crocodiles reach that size for, I mean, for certain nature, that's, because, of course, uh, human hunting is, of uh, like, skin, uh, like, for skin and such, and other crocodile species, like, makes deep crocodiles of that weight class very rare, for, for sure, for certain. But remote er in remote areas where Gustav lives in, yeah, I mean, that some of them manage to evade capture from humans and manage to throw a weight and, get, and be hefty, like, like Gustav right here. I read a lot about this case, too. Very interesting. And also, they made a movie about it, too, in 2007. Responsible for a staggering 300. Of course, this could be exaggerated yeah. or the result of several animals, a common problem with reports of man-eaters. Either way, you probably wouldn't want to get in the water with him. Hell no. Nah, this one's Hollywood. <laughs> right there, this. This is Eluding capture and shrugging off bullet wounds, Gustav has attained near mythic status. 
He was last sighted in 2015. So today, he may actually be more legend than living. Yeah. Number three, the Pinar Maneater. In the 1900s, a prolific man-eater stalked the Kumaon Hills in northern India, reportedly killing 400 people. In 1910, Jim Corbett, who'd later hunt down the Chogart Tigers and the Rudraprayong Leopard, stepped in. Scouting the area, he came across a remote homestead, where the leopard had dragged a sleeping woman from her bed. Her terrified husband had pulled her free, but the wounds in her throat and chest were septic. With medical aid miles away, Corbett kept watch outside through the night. But if the leopard was watching, it remained hidden, and the woman's wounds proved fatal. Determined, Corbett returned months later, and this time succeeded, shooting the leopard as it charged by the light of burning torches dropped by his men as they bolted. Hey, we would be running too. I would Number two, too. the Tigress of Shambhalat. No Jim ran. Corbett heard about the Pinar leopard while hunting an even more dangerous man eater in 1907. The Tigress of Shambhawat. Mm. The Tigress started killing in Nepal, evading hunters, and even the Nepalese army, whose efforts Damn. drove her down into India's Kumaon region. There, the killing continued, reaching an estimated 436, mostly women and children. Mm. It was one of Corbett's earliest and most famous hunts. Tracking a trail of blood, he found the Tigress, but was almost ambushed. The next day, he organized Lucky a beat man. of local villagers, who managed to drive the Tigress into his sights. When he examined the body, he discovered that a gunshot had broken her canine teeth, turning her towards new prey. Yeah. Before we Very continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel yeah. and ring the bell Definitely to get pattern. notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos. videos or all of them. Injury if you're on your phone, seat. make sure you go into your settings Loop and switch on notifications. National Number Frank. one, the Lions of Njombe. Tanzania one. has had several notable man-eaters. Yeah. In the 2000s, a lion named Osama oh. killed at least 35 people along the Rufiji River. But Osama's deeds pale next to those of the Lions of Njombe. Between 1932 and 1947, this pride of 15 lions in southern Tanzania was responsible for some 1,500 deaths. God they damn. were cunning, traveling to villages under the cover of darkness and reportedly using a relay system to drag bodies back into the bush. The attacks followed the colonial government's decision to kill thousands of zebras, giraffes, and buffaloes to protect livestock from an outbreak of rinderpest. However, locals had another explanation. The lions were controlled by a witch doctor named Matamula Mangera, who had been dismissed as headman from the Iyai village. Their reign of terror was finally brought to an end by British game warden George Rushby and his scouts. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be I'm, notified about our latest videos. I might just do sometime in the future. The one about top ten most aggressive animals in the war in the world. Definitely gonna check that that one out sometime in the future, and also shocking moments in Squid Game when I decide to watch the freaking show because everyone everyone else around me wants to fucking ruin not ruin it more so spoil the show the entire plot and everything on my social media timeline and I have to avoid the memes and such because again I've not seen the show myself and sometimes you can't give people nothing because they love to spoil shit. But anyway, back to the countdown. The countdown is pretty interesting. Got if quite a, got like five or six that I'm familiar with and those I have had no idea about and like I mentioned before, so not mentioned about like I've suspected and and I pretty much explain what what needs to be said, and and it goes to show on like goes to show how Mother Nature can be relentless, and how fragile us human beings are in comparisons to nature's like majestic predators, but especially without our fancy technology and firearms, and even like sharp handheld weapons, like it's pretty much over. It's pretty much over dealing with like big cats or like wolves, sharks, and what was it? Crocodiles. Like, we just out of our element without those weapons or strategy and coordination. And we kill off the natural food sources and enter or knock out canine teeth and shit. So, hey, want me to react to more? If you want me to react to more countdowns, be sure to hit that like button, hit that notification button, hit that subscribe button, and also be sure to post some in the comment section below if, you, if it's your first time watching this reaction. And for those that's new, be sure to follow me on my social media accounts. We'll be posting in the description box and hit that donation link to my PayPal. 
you know, to support your boy with the living expenses and merch. Because I want, because I want to give y'all that same energy like y'all gave to me as far as these videos. So be sure to get these views up, and be sure to check out my previous videos as well. For real, man, because we going up. It's your boy Black G92 about to sign off. I'll let your boy. Peace. <laughs>